Albert Serra Matteo Marelli no a te Thank you. grazie grazie mille e, um, ogni, ogni volta che, che vedo un tuo film ho, ho sempre, mi viene sempre in mente um, un aforisma di Eddie Marx eh, quello che dice la storia si ripete sempre due volte una prima volta come tragedia la seconda come farsa e in, in Passy Fiction incombe un costante senso di minaccia e una minaccia che però non vediamo eh, forse avviene, forse avverrà ma rimane comunque fuori campo è un film quindi su cui c'è un grande mistero e a renderlo così misterioso sono anche i personaggi tu prima insomma, hai, hai accennato al tuo metodo particolare che hai nel, 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 nel creare i tuoi personaggi mi sembra di aver letto da qualche parte che tu scrivi molto ma non scrivi nessun dialogo e, e quindi appunto volevo chiederti come li crei e come li metti in vita con gli attori. Well, okay. Uh, I like the first, uh, uh, you know, the quote you made because I think it's quite closer to reality nowadays. I mean, some people compare the film with Apocalypse Now by Coppola because of the paranoia and I, th I thought it was more closer to the Alan J. Pacula, you know, the parallel looks views, yes. you know, but okay. But anyway, the idea that there is no epic anymore, that there is no bad people, there is no idealism, that you don't know who are the good ones, you don't know who are the bad ones, that, and everything is a little bit mediocre and ridiculous, and or that the border between ridiculous and, you know, serious, it's quite, uh, you know, blur. And quite so, I like this idea, and I think it's quite contemporary and in politics, in life in general. You know, there are some words that uh, totally, you know, lost its meaning. You know, like I don't know, democracy, freedom, friendship, even love. You know, so uh, I don't know. I like this idea that uh, everything is on the edge of being ridiculous nowadays, and the, the epic is impossible. Well, sì, gli è piaciuta la citazione di Matteo e in effetti eh, gli piace questa idea che eh, la realtà sia diventata tutta un po' mediocre, tutta un po' ridicola, che non ci siano più delle, che ci siano delle parole che non hanno più senso, parole come democrazia, eh, parole, valori insomma, che, che in realtà non hanno più un senso nella realtà. So... And then if you, you know, there is some kind of ambiguity, you know, because I don't know, uh, rebellion is impossible and then, uh, but everybody more or less has his own a little bit uh, lucidity or more moral values. So the main character of the film, you understand that, okay, it's not a rebellious people, but maybe he, he takes care a little bit of what is right or wrong, but it's, you know, It's uh, what is nowadays, you know, you cannot make, and people is not actively acting in any sense. So, uh, and, but at the same time, it's fascinating visually, you know, it's like somebody like you have here, Berlusconi or, you know, Donald Trump, we have, you know, so, so it's people that it's somehow fascinating because they are connecting to pe connected to people somehow, you know, or more connected than the, all the or their enemies or all the people you know that it's fighting with them in elections so I don't know I like this idea that it's stylish but at the same time empty somehow that there is nothing else that but it's a stylish and it look it's promising but uh, but it's not ridiculous it's not mm, at the same time it, it pretends to be serious to represent you know the, somebody that it works for the state so I don't know uh, And in this middle point of hesitation, it's what I, I feel that I was, I don't know, comfortable as a filmmaker. 
e quindi eh, non, non c'è più una vera ribellione, non c'è nessuno che combatte realmente, parlando per esempio appunto proprio del protagonista, eh, è, è proprio come adesso, come la realtà di oggi, pensiamo a Donald Trump, a Berlusconi, eh, forse fa qualche cosa per qualcuno, cerca di fare qualche cosa di buono, ma non è chiaro, è ambiguo, eh, in fondo c'è qualcosa di affascinante, comunque c'è qualcosa di stiloso, di, di, che ci affascina, però è vuoto, non c'è davvero dentro nulla, non, non fa davvero niente per qualcuno. So to represent this, I have the same attitude they have with people that they have with the actors or with the crew. You know, I am like Berlusconi or Donald Trump uh, in the sense that, uh, I mean, yes, I care. I am a funny person. I want to give some like Berlusconi in the parties or with even with normal people. I mean, I like, I prefer to be happy and everybody happy than, you know, make here problems or tensions or unnecessary. So, okay, this is the setup. This is the frame. And, but then, okay, I have to create a, a you know, an art piece, a little bit avant-garde, a little bit with some challenging points. So, well, I don't give a shit about them, especially the actors because they receive a lot of money. So, you know, they, I mean, I don't like them in general because they receive too much money. They don't do a lot. They are very narcissistic. Uh, they are not uh, nice people in general. So, so, I mean, well, what do you have to do when you are there? You know, you are a nice person. You make nice thing. I mean, you create nice ambience, but these people, you don't like them a lot. And I think it's necessary to put some tension in the shooting because only with tension with actors this creates some kind of intensity in the images, in the final images of the film. So this is my job. And so I am somebody seducing the people, but at the same time I don't give a shit about them. In the especially actors. Eh? Technicians a little bit because it's good also to put some tension, but okay, it's another another approach. E quindi per creare, questo, per creare questo tipo appunto di, di racconto lui stesso si comporta esattamente come il suo personaggio, quindi come fosse lui Berlusconi o Donald Trump sul set, soprattutto con gli attori che non gli piacciono tanto perché insomma è gente pigra che guadagna un sacco di soldi non, non gli piace particolarmente e quindi si comporta con loro proprio nello stesso modo sì mettendo un po' di tensione perché la tensione serve per far progredire il set la intensità eh, delle immagini ecco eh, eh, la tensione e poi ah, ci vuole un po' di bellezza yes. no? un po' di yes. because I never I never found in my life a way to work with an actor in a collaborative way to think that, okay, I explain you the character, we all agree, we will show, you know, this ridiculous, you know, truth, and okay, uh, how good, you know, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, you know, this kind of people, oh, wow. So we, we worked this way, and I said, well, but this is, you know, I never thought that this will create any kind of intensity, or at, at, the, or at least the same kind of intensity if we have a fight, or not a fight, but a tension, you know, a misunderstanding, you know, a dismissing, uh, you know, atmosphere around, but uh, at the same time, you are nice, like Berlusconi, he thinks nice, but at the same time, you know, it's a traditor, you know, you never know. So I like this ambience, and I think that it's better for cinema. For theater, no, because in theater, you collaborative way between director and Actors, I think it's necessary because you have to repeat and the last row have to understand the same thing that the first row. But with camera, no. With cinema, camera is so subtle that it will capture things that, you know, it's beyond even, you know, it, uh, well. Sì, in teatro bisogna essere un po' collaborativi con gli attori perché la prima fila come l'ultima devono capire esattamente cosa sta succedendo, ci sono tante ripetizioni, ma nel cinema, è la, camera, eh, nel, nel cinema è la camera che cattura 
le sfumature e non c'è bisogno, anzi è, non è utile insomma, avere questa collaborazione, spiegare tutto agli attori esattamente cosa devono fare perché si perde l'intensità. The, yeah, La tensione è più utile, magari essere carini però poi anche un po'... Because, let's, if you were in the 50s or in the 60s, you know, after Second World War and there was some kind of idealism, You know, in the 50s after the war and in the 60s all the revolutionary and people, you know, the soul of people, there was something to show. You know, even an actor, an idiot, you know, could have something to show. There was some kind of purity inside. So, and the society also was able to accept that. But, you know, nowadays, you know, we saw the, the TV appear, then the private TV, you know, Berlusconi again, you know, Now we have internet and the, the platforms and the social net. You know that it's totally evil and evil and evil, you know, new layers of evil, you know, in an in extreme degree, and everybody accepts it. So society and people, now it's bullshit from human and moral point of view. So from my point of view, it's more interesting, not that what they have to show, that if you are in the 50s, like doing a Douglas Cirque, Even if it was a tricky point, but a tricky film, but or if you were, I don't know. Okay, actors could show something, but now, you know what they have to shoot is bullshit. And we have already seen in all these, you know, images, hundreds of thousands of images. We are all, you know, surrounded since uh, the 60s more and more. So what is interesting is that what they want to hide, not what they want to show actors. So for this reason, collaborative system is not interesting because we have to, you know, reveal what they want to hide. And I think that the camera is especially digital camera with digital, you know, with my setup of three cameras is especially powerful to really, well, I'm talking a lot in English, probably people understand English. I think so. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that it's especially powerful to really go in deep with that. And for the reason, I think it's quite coherent with the soul of people, with the potential of digital technology that uh, maybe there is few people or at least few people I know that go so in deep in the potential of this technology and also to the idea of create new kind, new atmospheres. You know, you see in the film, okay, maybe it's a normal film, but there are two or three scenes that have totally unseen atmosphere. Notably, for example, the one of my favorite, when the, the law of dialogue when they are in the house in the porch in the morning between the two the, the main character and I said you will be the, you are a lion you will be my army my arm and you will follow and I said what are they talking about you know I said this is fucking crazy but I don't know it's moving the the, the face of hair the expressions and the way you know they you don't understand exactly what kind of relationship they have so but it's moving anyway I'll try to translate. Eh, beh, insomma, negli anni 50-60 c'era un momento dopo la guerra, c'erano dei valori, degli ideali da raccontare, c'era un altro cinema che peraltro possiamo ancora vedere, adesso insomma, la situazione è totalmente cambiata, è un altro mondo, ci sono i social, le piattaforme, ci sono state le tv private eccetera 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 e quindi insomma non c'è più niente da raccontare, piuttosto eh, c'è da... Eh, Resumendo, eh, What do you have to show? I mean, non puoi dire agli attori insomma, di tirar fuori eh, bullshit, okay. a fake image of themselves. Se, se, devi piuttosto far vedere quello che gli attori nascondono, yeah. non quello che possono rivelare. Okay. And this is very, and the camera is powerful, the digital eh, sì, eh, la tecnologia digitale è assolutamente perfetta per rivelare queste cose. Se poi lui usa un set con tre camere e persone particolarmente capaci. Tre camere, zoom lenses, uh, none of my actors ever read the script, uh, they are there and it's quite embarrassing somehow, they accept it because all actors are masochistic, well, with the money they receive it's uh, compulsory, but uh, I mean... Gli attori non leggono la sceneggiatura, accettano di fare questo perché sono un po' masochisti e insomma il set è creato intorno a loro in questo modo. It's the only sincere thing I ever have ever seen in an actor that they are masochistic. È l'unica cosa vera che vede negli attori sono masochisti. Yes. 
what I don't understand because I don't like to suffer. I like to have pleasure and win, but I don't know. They are somehow a little bit special, maybe. Must be so. Se ovviamente avete domande da fare, cedo volentierissimo il microfono. Io cedo il microfono perché questo è portatile il suo no. Esatto. Sì. <laughs> là, arrivo. Well, I don't see anybody, but... Dov'è la mano? Qua. Uh, hi. Yes. Tout le monde boit e personne fume. Come sa? Tout le monde boit e qua? E personne fume. Sorry? Everybody drinks and nobody smokes. Why? I, don't, I always thought that uh, smoking it's not a, it's a, a quotidian gesture that I don't like in cinema. Well, maybe in the old cinema because it's a cliche, but in modern cinema I don't like mobile phones either. I don't like guns either in cinema. I will never use it. So I think that it's something that it's uh, not cinematographic in itself or it reveals it's perfect for... TV series on the platforms, guns, people smoking, uh, mobile phones, perfect for them, but not for me, you know, so I think it's, I don't know, you can, you can create an universe, you know, that it's extremely rough and wild and ultra realistic without, you know, the cliche of quotidian elements that, and it's especially because actors like to have something in their hands. When they are, you know, so smoking, mobile phone, guns, you know, it helps them to uh, do something. When they don't have this, you know, and when you have three cameras around, you know, it means the centrality of your performance. It's, uh, you know, it's more difficult because you, there is not a clear axe where you have to show something because one camera here, one camera here, one camera here. You don't have anything to do with your hands. You know, just do something more interesting. You receive a lot of money, you know. So, uh, you know, try to do something, not a fucking cliche. So, um, and then I think it starts to be interesting. And I was lucky because my actors were also very, in itself, very interesting. And some of them were gifted. Some others were, well, all the indigenous people were non-professional actors. I chose the last day of the shooting or the last day, the last five days. And they never act in their lives. So, you know, it's a strange mix somehow. But I don't know. I am used to it. I am not scared of that. And I think it's, it's I don't know, it's, it's more, it's, it's more, uh, paradoxically, it's more realistic. <laughs> you know, you don't want, you reject elements of reality, but at then, I don't know, it's a way to, to, to collect you know, some kind of uh, little details that are important, but they are not the typical details. Sì, non gli interessano certi elementi di realtà che poi sono un po' dei cliché come le sigarette, le armi, son, van bene per le serie ma non per, per, o il telefono, <ride> che tengono anche molto occupati gli attori, le loro mani, ma eh, preferisce metterli a disagio circondandoli appunto con camere che gli cambiano l'asse continuamente e senza però in mano quegli oggetti appunto che sono realistici ma sono dei cliché, mentre magari altri dettagli paradossalmente meno comuni sono alla fine, risultano alla fine in un maggiore effetto di realtà. And then you are in a dialogue that it's very lyrical, that it's very, you know, that can be poetic or even, you know, on the, on the age of being logic or not logic or giving inf relevant information or not. And, you know, without anything to do in the hands, but at the same time they are extremely wild, unpredictable, the actors. So, I don't know, it's... And for the reason I said at the beginning that I thought that when sometimes they are doing things that even me, I, and I edit the film, I don't understand how they reach this point of, I don't know, of, of... It's almost cruel, you know? It's almost this kind of approach to reality without anything. It's almost, you know, it's embarrassing for all the other films and actors, you know, that are for childish people. I mean, it, all the other films look di didactic for, you know, for kids. If you see another film, if you see a Scorsese film, you know it's like for kids. It should be done in Disney platform. Just, you know. 
insomma se vedi qualunque altro film anche un film di Scorsese è un film un po' per bambini perché è molto, tutto molto chiaro tutto molto un po' didascalico mentre nel suo film gli attori sono messi così a disagio senza niente in mano in que con questi dialoghi un po' metafisici, poetici che poi però sono imprevedibili vengono fuori delle cose prima mi sono dimenticato anche di tradurre eh, fra l'altro mol hanno molto talento questi attori gli attori protagonisti del suo film ma ci sono anche molti non attori attori non professionisti che, tutti gli, gli indigeni diciamo well, sono un po' più rapidamente ma non è così facile ma è lungo per spiegare ma è interessante per esempio Magimel half of the percent, 50% of the scenes ha herpes you know? But he never, Herpes, you know, er, you know that mm -hmm. where the dialogues were coming in and he was repeating the dialogues, okay. But he never read the script. Of course, he knew that he was a high commissioner, the, the uh, you know, highest representative of the state of France in the territory, whatever. Well, very basic idea. But he had Herpes. He came to the set every day and, you know, he, he, he was in front of some people, you know, in the discotheque or in the, uh, in the, in the office, whatever, and... He didn't know who was that people. He didn't know what they are going to ask. He didn't know which character are, you know, what are they are representing as, uh, you know, roles in the film. So, he had to, you know, say the sentence. Okay? Say the sentence here in the air piece. It's already quite difficult. Because when you say something, the new sentence is already arriving in order to reproduce the real speed of reality. So, you know, you have to be extremely concentrated. And this concentration comes from the air, that it's very close to the brain. No? So it means that you have to be, you know, to understand. Then you have to repeat the sentence. Very difficult. Then you have to, people will answer something. You don't know what they will do. You don't know who they are. So you have to understand, you know, in real time, who they are, what they are doing, who they represent. And, of course, at the same time, you have to act to perform accordingly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to, you know, to, to do something that is coherent with what you are understanding in real time and what. So it means that and as this, everything, all this concentration comes from the air, then it means that everything else is out of your control because it's so demanding at the level of concentration to, to do this, the sentence, understanding, perform, that all your body, all your reactions, whatever you do, and of course with the three cameras on all sides, you know, everything is out of, out of your control. You lose, literally, you lose control of your image mm -hmm. as an actor, mm -hmm. but totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it means that, and then it starts, you know, a new process of revealing what do you want to hide? And then the camera is ex it's extremely insightful to do that because an, a, a camera, a digital camera, can see things that human eyes cannot see because they are not enough precise and concentrated. And, you know, it's in the long term, in 20 minute, you know, take or 25 or 45 minute take that where the digital camera, you know, impose his, his own power of not, not getting tired being all the time, if you do a close-up, it will be all the time there, 45 minutes. If I do a close-up with my eyes of your face, in two minutes I will be tired, I will hear the sound, I will be distracted. You know, camera, no. 45 minutes there. And then on the edit, I will start seeing, you know, the most, uh, you know, uh, yeah, interesting and disturbing moments and, you know, mm -hmm. with, and this is, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just to finish, then it's like È molto interessante, you cercherò poi yeah. di tradurre in qualche modo. Then, with the advantage that with this system, when the, the person has totally lost control of their own image, I can put the dialogues I want, you know, in the airpiece. So, if I put a lyrical dialogue, an absurd dialogue, and totally not politically correct dialogue, because of the system and the tension they need, the, he will perform it in the same way, with the same intensity, with the same, you know, tension and craziness. And it can be a lyrical, an absurd, a ridiculous dialogue, and not politically correct, but it will have, you know, the, I don't know, the sensation that it's hyper-realistic or ultra, ultra, I don't know, ultra, how to say, ultra-naturalistic.
Insomma, avete comunque più o meno tutti capito il metodo, no? Con, eh, la, il, per esempio Magimel non ha, non ha letto il copione, non sa niente, è messo in una situazione di cui praticamente non sa niente, che non può assolutamente controllare, ma ha la voce nell'orecchio che gli dice cosa deve dire e quindi deve stare molto concentrato perché arriva una frase e poi ne arriva un'altra e deve stare molto concentrato su quello che deve dire e eh, in qualche modo eh, capire eh, all'istante, cioè una comprensione in tempo reale di quello che ha davanti, di quello che gli sta accadendo. Yeah, who is this in front of him? Who chi, chi c'è intorno a lui, esatto. E quindi da un lato c'è questa concentrazione che gli serve per appunto adattarsi in tempo reale alla situazione e dall'altro questa totale perdita di controllo di quello che gli accade. Perché esatto. Il cervello è super concentrato. Esatto. E quindi non può controllare la sua immagine. Chi controlla l'immagine è la camera. Queste tre camere che continuano per, per tantissimo tempo ininterrottamente a riprenderlo, poi dopo in fase di montaggio c'è tantissimo materiale dove ritrovare proprio l'immagine che serve, eh, che non è evidentemente controllata dall'attore ma eh, viene poi trovata in fase di montaggio, più o meno. <ride> Ma tanto hanno già capito tutti loro molto meglio di me. E, um, ovviamente fate alzate di mano se avete voglia di parlare e se no intanto vado avanti io. E questo è il, il primo film eh, calato nel presente. E, per gli altri tuoi lavori precedenti e chiamavi in causa insomma, dei riferimenti molto, molto impegnativi e penso al romanzo picaresco al, alla Bibbia alla pittura seicentesca alla cultura illuminista ecco volevo chiederti se per questo film appunto calato nel presente c'è stato qualche riferimento di questo tipo oppure se per la prima volta eh, non ti sei voluto confrontare con, con, con nulla. I wanted to change, you know, to do something different, to, to you know, offer my people around me working with me something different, but at the same time I realized that there was not a big difference between, you know, using period uh, stuff, period films and reality uh, or nowadays reality or war. Because for me fiction is fiction. So history is a fiction. And reality nowadays is a fiction. I always, go, I mean, for me, it's like being in love. You know, you live inside your own novel. You live in a non-real world. You are in love with somebody, and then reality becomes more interesting or more intense or whatever. But in fact, it's a novel. It's not, you know, you will fade out somehow. So for me, fiction is like this. So I don't care if it's historical or it's in Tahiti. Of course, I, I, I choose Tahiti because it's more artificial than shooting here, you know, in the streets or in this street in front or in these buildings, you have to put more effort to make it grow up as a fantasy in front. I will do it, I don't know. I cannot, I don't have any problem or maybe it takes more effort or more energy, but I can do it. But at that time I said, okay, let's do it easy. And especially, not for me because I don't care, I don't like Polynesia, I don't like traveling, I don't give a shit about them, So, but for my crew, and I said, they will send you to Polynesia, and everybody said, Tahiti, Polynesia, wow, yes, perfect. <laughs> so, I said, okay, why not? So, uh, and uh, it was a fantasy in our mind, not my mind, but the mind of the people around. So, mm, and for me, it was, mm, yeah, it was like being in the, inside the past. There was no difference. Being in Polynesia, being inside the past, I, need, I can do it here too. You know, in this street outside. But it takes a little bit more than effort and I was lazy at that moment and I said, let's make it easy. 
Insomma, non c'è differenza. Volevo offrire al qualcosa di nuovo, fare qualcosa di nuovo, di diverso, quindi è uscito dalla storia, però in realtà non c'è differenza fra un film storico e un film ambientato nel presente. In più, per facilitarsi un po' le cose, non fare troppo sforzo di ricostruzione eh, di fantasia, è ambientato in un luogo lontano, un luogo un po' fantastico, esotico, come appunto la, la Polinesia. E non l'ha fatto per lui perché non gli interessa la Polinesia, non gli piace viaggiare, ma più per la truppa che magari poteva invece essere allettata dall'idea di andare laggiù. Yes, and I didn't like Polynesia, the idea of traveling, and I was there, and I can guarantee you 100% any part of the coast of Italy or Greece, or even some parts of north of Spain or maybe France, it's better than Polynesia. So I was right, you know? I was totally right. It didn't, you didn't know? But in the mind of people, in the suggestion of the mind of people create a dream the idea of paradise and it's enough you know it's very difficult to do it outside here you know in this of course you can do it and but it takes time it takes uh, you have to find different strategies you know uh, so for me it was obvious that it was nothing but l'idea che la polinesia <laughs> L'idea che la Polinesia sia un paradiso è nella mente delle persone, è effettivamente è andata così, è sicuramente molto meglio qualunque posto della costa francese o italiana, ma andare là è, crea già di per sé un mito. Yeah, and when you go to a place, I like this clash, to go to a place, we don't know anybody, we don't know the culture of the place, we just have to mix in a spontaneous way, so I think that this... I don't know, creates new elements that are interesting, are funny, you know, so because you have to solve problems. Here you don't have to solve any problem. Well, I have to solve me, but only me, as a, you know, to how to make it grow. But there, I don't know, it's funny because it's full of unpredictable encounters and little... E poi è interessante andare in un posto lontano, diverso, con una cultura diversa, perché si creano degli imprevisti, devi risolvere dei problemi, è più divertente, cioè mette in moto insomma, la necessità di risolvere qualcosa. È di... Yes, it's far from our psychology, it's far from our culture, our behavior, so it's, it's funny. Like go to Africa and to go to a safari or whatever. Domande? And Shanna is, a, a, for me, was a very, um, um, yeah, you speak in Italian. I yes, I Italian. don't find the word yes, even in Italian. Italian. Magnetic, um, yes. um, personaggio. Yeah, speaking Italian. And can you speak me about her? I don't Something know. About It's very difficult. It's a mix of several things. Uh, first thing is that, you know, Well, first thing that as I started to work with her because it's a longer story, I don't know if it's interesting because, but okay, I had to, to choose between three act, three actresses for the main role and I, I didn't like any of them because they, they should be with Pauline or not indigenous, you know, face and dress and I didn't like any of the three. So I said, I am fucked. So I choose one, but I knew it was, you know, fucked. So, first day, first day of shooting, you know, two hours later, I said, we cannot use this person anymore, so it's over. Then, people started to say, we, we keep on shooting without the main female character. And then, uh, a lot of women on the crew told me, hmm, producer, women producer, and some people said, Albert, you know, we are not doing a fucking, another fucking film only with men. He said, well, it's not my fucking fault, I mean... You gave me these three options, all were bad. I mean, what can I do? We all, you all agree that it was not a good choice. So what is not my problem? Well, one day, two days, blah, blah. And then more days. And I said, Albert, uh, you know, you were not doing, a, doing again a film. I said, okay. Well, I call a, another of the actors of the previous film that I trust and I like. But had problems. she had problems with passports and COVID tests and I don't know. So she arrived on day 12 of 24 of total days of shooting. And then she performed very well. She got magic connection with Majimel. It's not Shana yet. It's another one, you know, from my previous film. That it was from Philippines, so it has indigenous, you know, Philippine, so Philippine and, uh, you know, 
pollination, it, you don't see the difference. Uh, well, if you see it, I will pay you the best restaurant in Milan. <laughs> so, because this idea of saying, ah, he says that and he's like dismissing, you know, the difference between pollination and the uh, Philippines. Well, if you see a difference between an Italian and a German or an Italian and a Spanish that I will put you, you know, I also pay you, you know, a difference if it's without clothes, if you put it naked. You know, maybe you will not see a difference. So, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I pay you. I pay you in the best restaurant in Milan if you see the difference. I mean, I don't like to lose. So, so okay. Poly and, and they uh, are you know, very, very uh, expensive. Philippine, Philippine girl that should work as a Polynesian girl. We can put it this way. And, um, okay. Then uh, it was very good with my Gmail and it worked and very nice scene, especially one scene that I always regret not to be able to put in the film. And then there was a discussion and a fight with the producer because of money. She was already in the previous film and she had the same kind of problem and discussion with the same producer. So, and this time she left. Okay. So, day 16 of 24, no actress, because we should, okay, so machines, but so little that the character didn't, you know, grow up as to make, a, you know, a whole film as the main character. You know, there was only, you know, six, four, five scenes. So, Shana is, was already there. Uh, we shoot uh, this scene that it's in the hotel when he arrives, and, you know, uh, and he says, ah, and they make a little dialogue, you know, ah, maybe I can give you your, uh, my address or whatever. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, let's, you, you know, let's keep on with her. And I don't know. It, uh, uh, she was really mysterious because she was transgender. But then I knew and I realized that, uh, well, this is an historical and, uh, you know, like, um, uh, how do you say in English? Um, like, um, well, sociological thing there, that when there is two kids, male, and the third one, if it is another male, is educated as a woman, because they need women to make some kind. So, when you grow up, when you are born, they dress you as a woman, make up, and you do the task of a woman. In some island, even if it's the second. But usually, it's a, but it's not you who decides. It's not this kind of thing that transgender that ah, I decide to change. It's my identity, no identity. You know, somebody else, your family decides from you. But at the same time, it's deeper. I don't know. It's fascinating. And until recent, very very recent times, there was no aesthetic surgery. Of course, they were connected nowadays a little bit with internet and all these things. And there was a start to people do some kind of aesthetic surgery and these kind of things. But not before. It was like a Japanese, uh, no, or I don't know, a strange, fascinating thing that all only make up and dress. Sing and attitude and, of course, uh, you know, the task. You are, you are, and they are very respected there. You know, homosexuals cannot get in to the church. But transgender, yes. This transgender, you know, that it's called ma ma Mahu or uh, Rere or, well, there is different kinds, but okay. Uh, it's too long, the, the explanation. But uh, so there was something, the, the, the two things that, I don't know, it was quite unexpected. And this idea that it's a transgender, but you don't feel any kind of tension, that is extremely natural. It's, it's strange for our eyes, you know, Western eyes. Of you know, we always see this as a political issue, and there it's not. So, uh, and I like it. And okay, but it was day 16 when we started to develop seriously all these things from 16 to 24 uh, between the two main characters. I like in the US when there was somebody in the audience that said, Albert. Ah, you are very opportunistic, like in a dismissing way. You use the transgender because it's on fashion. I explained the story and said, well, opportunistic. Uh, I mean, uh, was not my main idea in the beginning. I am sorry, but, uh, you know, the truth is the truth. You know, maybe you're thinking it's opportunistic of saying that, you know. No, I mean, I'm saying to this the guy American. who said that, yeah, to the, yeah. to the guy that said that, ah, you are opportunistic, you know. Who cares about what you think?
Riassumendo Quindi, rapidissimamente, ecco. c'erano tre candidate, ma nessuna delle tre funzionava, tutta wow. la truppa era d'accordo che non funzionavano, eh, però non, non volevano l'ennesimo film a tutti uomini, quindi ci voleva un personaggio femminile. Alla fine era riuscito a far venire già a metà delle riprese che sono durate 24 giorni, dopo 12 giorni è arrivata questa attrice che già conosceva, che era filippina, eh, che quindi aveva anche la faccia giusta, ma poi ha litigato il produttore, giusto? E quindi se n'è andata. E, e niente, e quindi erano di nuovo con eh, le pezze al culo, come si dice, ma eh, c'era già una scena con Shanna, che fa- era lì nell'hotel, faceva qualcosa, e funzionava. E poi lo ha colpito anche questo fatto che fosse transgender, ma che ha scoperto che nella loro cultura c'è questo essere transgender che non è politico, non è eh, voluto dalla persona in primis, ma è voluto dai genitori. Quando nascono due o tre figli maschi, il, di solito il terzo viene allevato come una femmina, quindi vestito da femmina per eh, compiere dei compiti da femmina e questa cosa lo ha affascinato e poi con, con lei con Shanna funzionava e quindi hanno sviluppato il suo personaggio. And I think it's the, you know, it's part of the originality, extreme originality of the film, you know. And I don't know how to say it. It was not I never wrote any character. I didn't I never thought about it, but it just came there by chance and of course I was smart at the beginning because I chose her as a secondary actor in the beginning of the of the shooting. But I never thought it, you know, because I was, you know, and I was more focused on Majimel, you know. What it will really make the film great is Majimel. But it's true that this character gives a lot of poetry to the film, you know. And without, it will be really weaker, the film. Un personaggio che ha dato della poesia al film, eh, che però è arrivato un po' per caso, certo lui l'aveva scelto per un personaggio secondario, ma che poi ha sicuramente contribuito a creare un punto di interesse forte nel film. Altre domande o curiosità, commenti? Allora ne approfitto io. E una cosa che mi ha incuriosito molto vedendo il film è che spesso volte quando il cinema si confronta con, con il mistero eh, l'immagine tende a, a nascondere qualcosa eh, tu invece hai deciso di lavorare con un'immagine molto, molto ampia grandissima e in cui quasi sempre c'è la profondità di campo quindi tutto è a fuoco, cioè eh, quell'immagine molto spesso non ci nasconde nulla. E, ecco, volevo chiederti perché que- que- è questa scelta. Well, you exaggerate a little bit, it's a little bit exaggerated, but it's true. Uh, it's a little bit m- more deep focus than in normal, you know, standard films. Uh, because I like the spectator to choose the details and to choose what they want. Uh, I don't want to decide for them the centrality of the image. I don't want to give them a central thing. Of course, if you make a close-up, but it's still, you know, I don't know. I like to create a little bit more ambiguous image, also because the film was shot in digital, of course, but we blow up to 35 millimeters. So somehow the texture of the film, it's very organic and very analogic, you know, analog. Uh, stuff because it was transferred to 35. So I like this ambiguity because the focus is not for 35. You cannot do it with, you know, 35 cameras and lenses. And then I like this image. I mean, I don't know. It's more ambiguous. You see a lot, but at the same time, it's it's grainy and it's and you you have wider choice as a as a viewer. And uh, it's the way I work. Because I like a lot of things happening, I like to give freedom to actors. So I like when actors are here, they can move there or there or there and still be in focus. It means that we don't have to stop the take to move the camera or to, you know, or operators should, you know, manage to, to do something. So I like to have a wider. Of course, if it's too much, the focus is TV, you know, it's, it's, it's another aesthetic. So you have to be in the middle of both. Not to have the freedom, but still to have, I don't know, the, the dream 
of of real cinema fiction. So it's it's a it's a balance, and I think that we got it quite well. We did the same with colors. You know, if you see the the film, we use a, we push a lot on the synthetic colors, but as it's organic and it's, uh, for example, in a lot of outside um, short shots, which is something I like a lot, uh, outside shots during the day, we put extra focus. But in a, such a powerful way that you don't know what kind of light you have there. Half, it's, uh, you know, it's artificial somehow because it's shiny, but at the same time, you see that it's on the afternoon or in the morning, you know, it's just outside with normal light. So always, you know, creating ambiguity at the level of perception of, of the visuals of light. And, and then we push, and we were able to push on, on synthetic light because it was so organic, the, the texture, and also, I don't know, the way actors perform, what's happening inside the frame. Then, okay, you push, you push, you push on the synthetic side of colors and the artificial side, and it works even better. It's more fascinating the image, it's more paradoxical, and I don't know, and you are there, you don't know what's going wrong. It's nothing wrong. It's nothing right. But you are in a fantasy. But it is, you know, you don't know where you are. You don't know exactly what kind of image you are in front of. So, I mean, pl from plastic point of view, and uh, I think that it increased the mystery of the film. And it worked, and I will like it a lot. And but we decided at the very end of the, when the edit was already done. È un modo di costruire l'immagine che cerca di rendere l'ambiguità, la ricchezza, l'ambiguità, la mh, possibilità di percepire cose diverse, anche proprio eh, per lasciare in cam un campo ampio dove i personaggi si possono muovere in varie maniere, sono sempre sotto l'occhio appunto delle camere e ehm, non c'è bisogno di fermare la camera, quindi se si muovono avanti, indietro, a destra, a sinistra, e, e l'occhio dello spettatore ha la li libertà di scegliere cosa seguire, che taglio seguire, su che cosa focalizzarsi e poi è un'immagine ambivalente, ambigua anche dal punto di vista proprio della tessitura eh, perché è ripreso digitalmente ma poi è anche eh, stampato eh, in 35 mm quindi c'è anche la grana del 35 e poi c'è questa eh... non solo la grana ma come le luci sono trasformate perché è mm. impredictabile quando si blow up to 35 okay. it became, I don't know, a blur Strange, uh, you know, you don't know what it will appear. Quindi cambia anche la luce passando al 35, cioè una, non, non sai bene che cosa può venire fuori. E, e poi l'altra cosa era eh, la e grana. Poi, sì, e poi sì, questi colori appunto artificiali, sintetici, eh, che, per cui non sai mai bene che cosa stai vedendo. È luce naturale, sì, ma c'è anche questa aggiunta di luce sintetica che ci sta bene, che ti rende tutto ancora più fantastico, ma non sai bene esattamente che, che luce sia. Ma sembra, a me è sembrata sempre una luce degli anni 60, non mi sembra mai una luce di questi anni. In tutto il film. Di questi? Questi anni. Questi anni. Cioè le sembra la luce di un'altra epoca che le fa pensare agli anni 60. Could be, could be, yes. We were a little bit inspired by the films of the 50s, saturated of Minelli and all these things, but in a more contemporary way, you know, in a more, yeah, strange, a little bit, uh, I don't know. Yeah, psychode psychedelia even, you know, in the slight details, psychedelic. Non hai pensato per caso anche a Fassbinder, che era il depresta? Maybe best, in best. the interiors, but not so much, because, you know, when we did the interiors of the discotheque, we wanted the black light, so it was a little bit like black and white, obviously, it's not exactly, but... And the opposite, in order not to, you know, make you think about Fassbinder, we put it black, uh, you know, <laughs> the black light, so... I don't know, maybe it was an instinctive reaction, but we never thought of this way. And we, the black light, I mean, I decided in the script already because it was the only way that I like when the servers were only with the, with the yeah, uh, yeah, that it's white. So you see it very, you know, shiny and all the rest, it's a little bit more. So this was an, a script idea. But uh, then, yeah, it was already with this black light to do this effect. And, but then it was not so spectacular there. 
So it said, oh, let's mix a little bit and sometimes it go a little bit more on colors and then it goes, fades out and uh, black light and you never know. And But when you see the film, you don't, you know, point so precisely all these things. Well, if you are a, you know, super concentrated spectator, yes. But in general, you know, you are so focused on the plot and on the mystery of the characters that you don't have time. Your brain has no time to, 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 to check all, the, all these kind of things. At least the first time you see the film. Devo tradurre anche questo pezzettino, secondo me si è capito tutto. <laughs> ok. Facciamo una ultima domanda, che poi mi sa che è tempo. Um, uh, I really liked the, the um, music and the sound of, uh, of the movie, and uh, uh, I, wanted <laughs> I wanted to ask you if you could talk about uh, the fact that uh, music and sounds of ambient sounds and ambient music, uh, it's, uh, uh, they form, a, a, to me, was like a mixture between them, uh, the, the scene uh, of, uh, with the airplane. There is the, the sound of the airplane, and uh, at, yes. uh, sometimes it uh, seems uh, also ambient music, a drone, yes. and uh, yes. Well, this is what I like. I mean, this I learned a little bit uh, from conductors. You know, conductors are classical music because they think that they are conducting music and they are not conducting music. They are conducting sound because uh, you have a huge orchestra, you have, uh, you know, hundreds of layers of sounds and you simply have to order, put order on that and then music appears. But, you know, you don't think about music. You think, okay, at the very end, you feel that the accumulation of decisions you take with all these layers of sound, then it creates a concrete music or a concrete experience of, you know, a feeling of something. But they don't think, they don't want to express, uh, you know, something. Of course, you have conceptual approach to the music, but in general, it's sound for them. So for me, uh, and it's a Godard teaching too, you know, for him in the, in the last 20 years, all the, you know, sound, music, even dialogues, it's the same. It's exactly, it can be confused. And also dialogues, you know, in, 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 in Godard. And here there is some moments where dialogues also, the content of the dialogues, it's so, how to say, it's so irrelevant that, not irrelevant, but it's so irrelevant that the normal way dialogues are relevant, that they became a little bit of music or sound, or just, so it's part of the game. And I like this idea that, You know, music, when it's, it means that where is something melodic, transforms in sound. That it happens often, where there is a music and it's melodic, but then it's ugly suddenly. And it's um, atonal, or, you know, that it's, you know, not harmonic. But the same, there is some sounds, and then, as you described quite well, uh, it becomes music, because as it's regular, and it's smooth, and, it's, it, and you don't know, Music and sound, it for me, it's the same nowadays. And I don't see any difference. And uh, I don't know. Of course, there is this song that it's quite a part. But this idea that you are a conductor, and uh, it's, a, it's a consequence of not thinking about meanings, also at the level of sound, even in the dialogues. You know, you don't think what this means. You simply, you know, think about you know, what uh, the feeling, you know, what it feels, how do you, the mood, the physical impact on you, on the earth, of course, but the, the physical mood that this creates around, not even inside your body, but around, inside the collective body of the cinema. Well, it's an abstraction when we do the edit, but I can somehow predict, uh, you know, this feeling. So I like to, you know, and this is maybe the hypnotic part of the film, It's because of the sound. Of course, it's intriguing. The main characters, and it's all the time you don't you want to know more and what's going on with this guy, if it's you know, stupid or it's ridiculous or if it's smart. Right? So it's fascinating somehow to look, you know, to, to, to watch him, to watch the film and look at him. And, but I think that the rhythm, because if you see about the edit, uh, there is nothing, you know. Uh, it's fixed camera. There is no, any kind of sensuality on the image. Fixed camera, always. 
you know, there is a panoramic at the end, but almost nothing else. So there is no, but uh, I don't know, it creates, uh, and of course it's a uh, very smart way of editing and somehow it's something I learned in previous films, especially in Liberty, the previous one. I like to, when sound says, especially on ellipses, you know, on the transitions, when sound marks something and the image the opposite. But do it not in a generated way, in a very subtle way. And then the film becomes really psychedelic and hypnotic. Because if there is something on the image, there is a cut, and they said, ah, there is an ellipsis. No? Because the image, it is character here, and then they are in another place, and there is an obvious ellipsis. But the sound, it's totally continuous, and even the sound at the end of the first shot, it keeps on. And you see, in the second shot, you know, it's continuous, the sound. So it's, you know, a narrative point of view, two things happen. Or there it was an evolution of, of the of the narrative ap approach to the story, but the sound is totally continuous. So it means that it's very sensual. So that you put something that it should be like narrative, you know, step by step, understanding meanings, but it's sensual because the sound is continuous. And the opposite. Sometimes you see, fuck, this guy is here, you see another shot, and it's the same guy, same position, same place, and the sound creates uh, ellipses. And he said, but why? They are saying something? And the dialogue keeps on, almost in the same, exactly in the same subject, a little bit different, but not so different as the sound mark as an ellipsis. So, especially in the discotheque, when he's changing, he looks crazy, a little bit changing of subjects, but in an extremely enchaining, you know, uh, encadenar, no? Uh, sí, sí. Yes, you know? The subjects, that is like in a trip, and you don't exactly, from a strictly rational point of view, you cannot identify, and this is extremely, extremely interesting, in the scene in the car, where he starts doing this monologue that it's crazy. Everybody understands, everybody remembers the first sentence of the scene, when he says, the, the politics is like a discotheque, nobody hears, you don't see anything, blah, blah, blah. As anybody can tell me, you know, the scene is six uh, or almost seven minutes, you know, the monologue. Can anybody here tell me what he says in the last three minutes? One sentence? Huh? Burn what? Yes, yes, uh, there was some crazy stuff. Burn what? Doing what? Yeah, burn or open the lights, no, he said too. Ah, yes, right, or not? Because he said that you'll open and you'll be in the sea and open and everything, there will be nothing. And So, it's really, it's amazing, and I edit this scene myself. And, uh, I mean, even for me, I edit the film and I don't know what he said. I could not repeat what he says in the last. Because it's so fascinating the way the ellipses and the sound is treated that, you know, and you think, and it's in the increasing paranoia. So you don't know if it's a real dialogue on real time, but the, you know, the rational sentence one after another, it's say, saying something that it's paranoid, but at the same time, uh, it's paranoid, but you could remember it because it should be a logic even in the paranoia. But when you start to lose the logic and the distortion of the content, but at the same time, the sound and everything, it looks, and you know, the attitude of the guy next to him and everything looks extremely continuous and realistic. So, you know, well, it's a fascinating scene. I recommend you to see it twice, especially the second part of the scene. <laughs> È interessantissimo, ho oh, pochissimo perché sta arrivando il taxi, yeah. <ride> e, yeah. però poi è, è registrato quindi ce lo possiamo rivedere. Comunque, in poche parole, eh, governare il suono nel suo film è stato un po' come essere un direttore d'orchestra che deve mettere in ordine tanti strati, che quindi eh, sono diversi strati di suono compresi i dialoghi che non sono solo il senso dei dialoghi ma anche appunto uno, un, uno strato sonoro un po' come insegna Godard nei suoi film e poi c'è questo effetto appunto del suono sulla continuità o sulla discontinuità nel montaggio che è molto potente e che è anche un, uno degli elementi ipnotici forti del film 
quindi al di là di quello che crea la trama, il dialogo, il senso del dialogo, c'è poi l'intervento del sonoro che può creare una continuità, una discontinuità e eh, creare un effetto ipnotico molto forte. Ho riassunto molto. And they understand English. <laughs> eh, il tuo taxi ti sta venendo a prendere. I didn't order it, so... <laughs> Well, Grazie Albert Ferra, è stato un piacere e un onore. Grazie ancora. E grazie a tutti per essere rimasti fino a ora tarda. E spargete voce e buonanotte a tutti.